and that is to introduce the concepts of uh, linear programming and, and mixed integer programming to provide the foundation. So this, this concept we're going to discuss now uh, uh, is what is implemented inside the, the, the tool. To have an understanding about this, is, it's helpful because it gives you a, a sense of uh, how to write a, a model, what the limitations might be on, on the solver, and, and it's a really fun uh, and intuitive uh, discipline, I, I, I find. So linear, linear programming. I, I wonder if we have a way of, uh, of doing a, a poll here, but maybe not. Uh, so what, what is a linear programming problem? A linear programming problem, it's a problem in which we want to minimize an objective function subject to other functions. All the functions in, involved here are linear functions. So we want to minimize a linear function f subject to linear functions h1, h2 through hm. All the functions are linear. The, the, the variable that we have is an n-dimensional vector. That's a vector x of real values that has a, a dimension of n. So this is a pretty ge generic uh, formulation. The key here is that the functions involved in this problem are all linear. Uh, the canonical way, the canonical way of writing a, a, a a linear programming problem. There are different canonical ways depending on the on the implementation behind the, the LP formulation. In this case, we are writing this problem as a minimization problem subject to inequality uh, constraints less than or equal to zero constraints. So uh, we have a, a couple of examples there. Uh, uh, the, the type of function we have, 3x plus 2x2 is an objective and the functions h, h also have to be linear. And there's an example there as well. So I think this is pretty straightforward. Let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, is this a linear programming problem? And I don't know if I have a way to interact with the audience. Uh, I can give a, a couple of seconds or maybe someone can answer. Is this a linear programming problem? Okay, well, uh, it, it is a linear programming problem because all the functions involved in the formulation are linear, all of them. The objective is linear and the constraints are linear. So this is a linear programming problem. We want to minimize a function over a domain of linear functions. What about this one? Okay, this this uh, uh, this is not a linear programming problem because we have a quadratic term in one of the functions in the objective function x1 squared, and that makes the problem nonlinear. We have a nonlinear term, therefore this is not a linear programming problem. X1 squared is nonlinear, so this is not a linear programming problem. What about this? If we're trying to minimize the difference, the absolute value of a difference between two variables. So although although x1 minus x2 is a linear function, the absolute value is not a linear function. Therefore, this problem is not, it's not a linear programming problem. Uh, <coughs> what, what about this problem? This problem is linear in the, in the function and the constraints, but we would like to write this problem in what I refer to as canonical way. So is there a way to write this same problem in an equivalent way that translating, translates into a minimization problem subject to inequality constraints less than or equal to? And the answer, the answer is yes. You can take any linear programming problem and you can pose it in the way that we, we refer to as canonical. So we want all the problems to be written as minimization problems subject to a certain type of inequality constraints. You don't have to do that in practice. The solver that does that automatically in the background. But I, I'm, I'm talking about this because this refers to the operations done internally within Gurovi. So if we take this problem, we can write we can write this uh, uh, objective function as As a minimization problem, yeah, sorry, there was a there was a, a short gap in the communication. So we can write the, minim, the the maximization as minus the minimization of the problem and multiply the objective by minus one. That's equivalent. It's the same number. And then 
we can we can multiply by minus one the, the inequalities that are greater than and the 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 only equality constraint that we have the only equality constraint that we have which is four times x1 plus x2 minus nine equal to zero that constraint can be written as two inequalities that are equivalent so if you have a equal to b then a greater than b and a less than greater than equal than b and a great, less than or equal to b is the same as a equal to b which is what we have here so we have written an equality as two inequalities and then the rest of the problem uh, doesn't have to be changed the right hand side in the slide shows how to write the, the same problem on the left in a canonical way uh, if most of you are like me uh, i prefer i prefer sometimes when possible to see uh, uh, graphics because they they can provide an intuitive sense of what a problem is and this this is not just optimization it's any sort of problems so let's take this problem that we see here we want to maximize over a, a two-dimensional uh, grid over r2 x1 plus x2 so that's the, that's, a, that's a, the xy plane x1 in the horizontal axis x2 in the vertical axis we want to maximize the sum of x1 plus x2 subject to those linear constraints so let's see how this looks the easy one is well x1 uh, being positive x1 being positive uh, uh, means that we're going to stay on the right hand side of the y-axis where you see those arrows so that blue area is x1 being positive then we have we add another constraint which is x2 being positive if we add that, that that limits us to the upper right side of the of the xy quadrant right we have to stay in the blue area if we just look at x1 and x2 being both greater than zero when we add the third constraint x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 2 boom that's what we have so the blue area that you see on this slide is the feasible area defined by the constraints that means that means that we have to maximize x1 plus x2 but we have to do that staying within the blue area and the blue area is the area defined by by those three linear constraints okay so how how do we do this how do we do this uh well one one way of doing this is we can we can draw we can draw a, a, a line of what x1 plus s, x2 is uh, for different for different values. So let's take the function x1 plus plus x2 because that is our objective function. And let's assign to that function different values. Okay, we want to see what's the maximum value x1 plus x2 can take. So let's just start in the lower left corner. If we make x1 plus x2 equal to zero. And we draw that line that line is going to be the red line that you see here right and a quick way to verify that is to replace the origin zero zero in x1 plus x2 and that's equal to zero that is in the corner of the feasible region now let's increase the value of x1 plus x2 let's make x1 plus x2 equal to 0 0.5 to one half that will move the line a bit further to the right you can take any point in that red, red line inside the blue area and those points are going to be feasible according to the constraints right because this problem is linear you can infer now that if we keep moving that red line to the right x1 plus x2 is going to start going up it's going to continue to go up and we have to just move the line as far as we can if we do it even further x1 plus x2 equal to one here we are a bit further to the right you take any point in that red line inside the blue area is going to be feasible you take you can take one half and one half and you will see that it very it satisfies all the constraints let's go a bit further <clears throat> a bit higher 1.5 and if we keep going <coughs> i'm sorry if we keep going you will see that the the most we can push this red line is to that vertex vertex on the lower right corner so if you take if you take uh that point x1 equal to 2 and x2 equal to 0 right 
that should be the optimal point. Why? Because we cannot push that line any further. If we do so, we're going to be outside of the blue area. So we're just at the boundary. Correct? So there it is, 2 and 0. If you take x, x equal to 2, 0, meaning x1 equal to 2 and x2 equal to 0, and you plug that in the objective, you get a maximum value for the objective equal to 2. If you take those two numbers and you plug it in any of the constraints, it's going to be feasible. If you take the first one, 2 plus 2 times 0 is, is 2. That's less than, than or equal to 2. And the remaining constraints hold as well. So here you can see by this uh, diagram a property of linear programming problems. In linear programming problems, usually the solution of the linear programming problem will lie in one of the vertices of the feasible region. In most cases, you will find that that is the case. The feasible region is defined by a polytope, and in one of the vertices of the polytope, you're going to find the solution to the linear programming problem. There is an exception, of course. If we take that blue triangle and we start rotating it uh, clockwise, we might find that the, the upper constraint can be parallel to the red line. In that case, we will have infinite solutions, but that doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. In general, as I said, the solution to a linear programming problem will lie in one of the vertices. So uh, I, I hope this, this was clear. I hope this was clear. We're going to talk now about how to solve this from an algorithm point of view. So the, the problem that we just talked about, the linear programming problem, <coughs> can be written in matrix notation as, as follows, C transpose X subject to AX less than or equal to B. Uh, here, the, the, the variable X is two-dimensional for the sake of this example. We have, we have two methods to solve linear programming problems. One, one method is the simplex method, which is very known, and the other one, which is, well, nowadays it's also very known, but it came a little later, it's the barrier or interior point method. So I'll explain how each of them work. The simplex method will take the feasible region. Remember that blue triangle, that, uh, that uh, uh, it was a, it's a polytope actually, it's a polytope. If we take that polytope, which defines the feasible region, what the simplex method will do is, since we know that the solution is in one of the vertices of the polytope, it will, it will find a starting point P1 in one of the vertices, and then it will move along the edges of the polytope to the next vertex, and then to the next vertex, P1, P2, P2 to P3, and so on, until it gets to the vertex P5, which is the solution to the problem. There are different ways to, to move from, from vertex to vertex, one one uh, one uh, uh, obvious way is to take the vertex that leaves P1 that has the highest uh, slope to make the best pro progress in reducing the objective function. So this is this is a uh, basically what the simplex method is. The interior point method to solve linear programming problems is a little different. Uh, this is what we just said. This the the barrier method is different. In the barrier method, let's say that we have a two-dimensional a two-dimensional uh, problem, and uh, those blue lines that you see there are the constraints. So we know we know that the uh, optimum of this problem is going to be at one of the vertices. So it's going to be at one of these intersections that we have here, right? And the way the interior point method works, the barrier method, which is the same name for the same uh, algorithm, uh, it's different. So in this method, we choose a point that is inside the polyhedron, that is inside. And then, and then we find the direction to traverse from that interior point towards the vertices. We make one step in that direction. We, we center the point in, in the feasible region. Then we take a next step and then the next step and then we traverse through the interior of the polytope towards the, the vertex where the solution is. So these are two different approaches. They're both used. They're both used. Some problems are such that it's better to use simplex on some other types of problems. Barrier seems to work better. And because both algorithms are 
are, are meant for linear programming problems and they're relatively inexpensive. What we do in Gurobi is we run both at the same time and then whoever is, is done first is the one we use to report the solution of a linear programming problem. Of course, the user, the end user also has the choice to decide, I wanna use simplex all the time, I don't wanna use barrier, or I wanna use barrier and not simplex. If you do nothing, the, the solver will run both and it will pick the winner to find the solution of a linear programming problem. Okay. This is this is the, the, the section on, on linear programming. Uh, uh, 